Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Business Development Seminar Series at the Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center. My name is Mary Jo Williams. I'm the Network Training Coordinator, and I will be your facilitator and moderator for today's session. And today's session is starting a business in the Virgin Islands. And we have as our presenter for today, Mr. Greg Kopach. But before I do the introduction of Mr. Kopach, I want to share a video with you about the Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center. Has your business been affected by COVID-19? The Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center is available to assist entrepreneurs and small businesses in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The VISBDC is sustained by the University of the Virgin Islands and the U.S. Small Business Administration and collaborates with local agencies to support the small business community. The VISBDC is nationally accredited and provides free consulting, business education training, and technical assistance. Attend workshops with subject matter experts from both the public and private sector. From idea generation to exit strategies, the staff at the VISBDC is ready to assist you. Now is the time to contact them, so don't wait. Call or email them to find out how they can help your business grow and succeed. ¿Su negocio ha sido afectado por COVID-19? El Centro de Desarrollo de Pequeñas Empresas está disponible para ayudar a los empresarios en las Islas Vírgenes de los Estados Unidos. El VISBDC es sostenido por la Universidad de las Islas Vírgenes y la Administración de Pequeñas Empresas de los Estados Unidos para apoyar a la comunidad de negocios pequeños. El VISBDC está acreditado a nivel nacional y ofrece consultoría gratuita, educación empresarial y asistencia técnica. Asista a talleres con expertos en la materia, tanto del sector público como del privado, desde generaciones de ideas hasta estrategia de salida. El personal del VISBDC está listo para ayudarlo. Ahora es el momento de contactarlo si necesita ayuda. Llame o envíe un correo electrónico para averiguar cómo puede ayudar a que su negocio crezca y tenga éxito. and welcome back. Again, my name is Mary Jo Williams. I'm the Network Training Coordinator for the Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center, and I will be your moderator for today's session. Our presenter for today is Mr. Greg Kopach, and as he brings up his PowerPoint presentation, I will give you a brief uh, bio of Mr. Kopach. Now, Greg Kopach is an accomplished entrepreneur and he's currently a business advisor at the Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center. Uh, he's providing emerging and existing businesses with high quality professional counseling and training. Greg is a veteran of the US military and he was also a 17 year SBA, a SCORE volunteer um, with SCORE and SCORE stands for Service Corps of Retired Executives. And now you don't have to be retired to be a SCORE volunteer. Greg is also bilingual in Spanish, and he cherishes the many diverse business and cultural experiences gained from living and working around the world. His motto is, what can't be measured can't be managed. So Mr. Kopash can be reached at 340-692-4294, or you can email him at gregory.kopach at ubi.edu. Now, today's session is being recorded on Facebook and, with, and it will also be shown on our YouTube channel. We will share a copy of the presentation towards the end of the presentation today. You can put your questions in the chat and we will answer them. Um, Greg will tell us how we will answer them. We will probably answer them at the end of the presentation, but he will clarify that for us. And without any further delay, I give you the man of the hour Mr. Gregory Kopach from the big island of Santa Cruz. Greg, the show is yours. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank, thank you for the kind words and welcome everyone um, to our business development webinar series. And today 
we're going to talk about starting your business in the Virgin Islands. And I, I will tell you, I, I'm excited about this particular webinar at this particular time. Think about this, a year, year and a, a half ago, we were, we were struck with a state of health emergency, um, and that thing turned a lot of us inside out uh, in business. But look, look now where we are. We are starting to see um, quantifiable data that shows that we now have pent up demand. There's, uh, we should be optimistic. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pent up business. We're seeing it in the retail sector already. We're seeing it in the, in the hospitality sector. Construction permits are up. So those of you in this audience who are considering starting a business in the Virgin Islands, um, I salute you uh, and we want to help. This particular seminar is gonna be about starting that business. Um, a little bit about what we do first uh, at the SBDC. If I can get my, there we go. Um, these core functions uh, apply to our Small Business Development Center. We are one of a thousand networks out there that are hosted by a university. And then also on the other side of the relationship is the, is the SBA. We, we have a thousand of those relationships. And what you see in front of you are all of those networks core functions. All of our advising is at no cost. Our trainings are at no cost. Once in a while we have, we charge for a training that may be very specific or very detailed. Um, we're a business resource for business owners. That's what we are. It's what we do every day and it's why we come to work every day. So today, again, we're gonna talk about starting a business. What is our objective today? And we've got an hour to accomplish it. And here it is. We're gonna look at just 10 questions that cover the issues that we have to address if we're gonna start a business. And by the way, um, some of these questions on here really, really became amplified during COVID. So we're gonna look at the questions one by one by one, okay? But first we're gonna show you all 10 questions. So you can just read through those these are the first five. These are the second five. Okay, so that's our objective today. We're gonna look at 10 questions. And by the way, we're gonna see something interesting here and in that as we go through the questions, uh, guess what? We're going to see a lot of other questions, okay? So these are the, at the top of the category, these questions. And by the way, we've got to ask and we must answer these before we start a business, any business, okay? So let's start. Let's go through this. Do I have what it takes to operate a business? Um, it's easy to say, yeah. I can do this, but you know, we can tell you stories that you really have to think this through. I can remember being in an office when I had my last business, a guy and I bought and sold businesses. A guy walks in and says, I need something that will make me a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's all he said. And you know, we had an array of solutions for that, but I handed him to him a some franchise information on a company called Roto Rooter. When I handed it to him, the, the gentleman said, oh, you don't understand, Greg. I'm used to coming to work in a shirt and tie. So th there was a lesson learned there and there are many good lessons here when you read through these. These questions frame your work environment in large part. Can you work alone? Okay. What if we have a family? What if we want to blend this into the family? Okay. 
And how, how much of a risk taker am I? Because as a startup business, um, you have a capital R all over you. A, a startup business is a risk. And man, if you don't believe it, ask a local bank. Um, it's very hard to get them to take a look at startups uh, from a financing standpoint. So to ask the, take a serious look at these questions and, and really try to design that environment for you that, that get as close as you can get to what is going to do that's going to capitalize on your experiences, on your skills, on your strong points. Um, and then what's left will be the voids where we need to do some work in, okay? So there's a lot of questions in there, okay? And they speak, they speak to a lot of different types of businesses, okay? The, uh, the last one down there that talks about money management skills, um, if we, if we don't mention it throughout this seminar, I can't stress how important having a money management, a bookkeeping, a financial management system in place. Um, if you don't believe that, talk to the folks who got held up during these critical COVID times, trying to get COVID resources like idle loans, PPPs. It's the folks who walked in with that with that folder that had every tax return, every profit and loss, had their employee payroll data, their employee counts, keep good records, keep good records. Number two, take a look through, take a look at those, read the, that first half there. You know, depending on where we are, in life, it, this may not be a good time for us to start something, you know, very, very extraordinary. Perhaps it's very prudent for us to look at what we do like and what we're good at, okay? And, you know, we'll always have people, we'll, we'll usually have people out there that are doing some semblance of what we want to do, but the whole idea to do it is because we want to produce it differently. We want to improve on its features. We want to be able to um, sell it for less perhaps because we can produce it lower than our competitors. Okay. So those are just some of the questions. Again, these questions beg other good questions. Number three, a successful entrepreneur. Um, well, I guess we could add add to the six that are already listed here, but uh, over the years, entrepreneurs have some very unique uh, characteristics and spirits, and and uh, but all in all, um, from from my perspective and my experience, um, entrepreneurs are are somewhat of risk takers. Um, entrepreneurs are folks that are not afraid to roll their sleeves up uh, and do the work, put in the hours, uh, sacrificing the time uh, and things like that. Um, as far as the number three here, planning, uh, contingency planning, um, you know, I if you walked into our office and um, you would know that Planning is paramount. We can't, there's nothing that will replace it, okay? We must plan. We just must plan. Um, it's the way I've always done it. I did it through five startups and sold four of those companies and, you know, planned it uh, the whole way from soup to nuts, okay? But there's a lot of work. Entrepreneurs aren't... Uh, Entrepreneurs aren't necessarily born, but they are a unique breed. And I will tell you again, the timeliness of this webinar, we're, there's folks in the audience here that are seeing opportunities coming off this, hopefully a tail end of a, uh, a COVID pandemic, and they're thinking business, okay? 
goes to show you there's no shortage of entrepreneurial spirit here. Our phones ring off the hook lately um, with folks wanting to, to bounce ideas, business ideas off of us. So it's a good time. It's an exciting time. And we're starting to get a little quantifiable data to back it up, which, you know, that's undisputable when you've got the data. Here are some other characteristics of entrepreneurship. Can't stress number 12 enough. In the business plan as well, we'll see. The business plan is paramount. We'll talk about it in a little bit, but there are just some doggone good reasons to do that. Um, and it's not just if you need a loan. It, that's, not, that's not really the reason to, to do a business plan. How could you organize? Well, that's interesting. How should we organize? Um, and by the way, these structure, these legal options you see in front of you, that is not a complete list. Um, either right, right before COVID, uh, I don't know exactly when, but we, there's a couple new types of corporations out there actually. There, we now have a B corporation um, that can kind of, the best way to describe it, it mixes um, purpose with profit, if you will. Very, very interesting legal structure. But, you know, these are one of the questions that we've got to answer when we start a business, because when we ask this question for speaks to three things. When we ask this question, how should I reorganize? Do I need to be a sole proprietor or an LLC? Well, we're talking about three things, and that's what we want to nail down. Those three things are, in terms of legal structure, how is the ownership determined? What, how is the liability addressed? And what is the tax treatment? Those are the three big categories of how we decide what type, okay? They, each of them speak to the ownership. For example, two people cannot have a sole proprietorship. And one person cannot start a limited partnership, okay? So it speaks to ownership. It's, they, these choices speak to liability as well, okay? Um, you have a, things like a sole proprietorship that's unlimited liability, but other structures afford um, more liabilities. There are some where the owners are not personally liable. Okay? There's a lot of information to go through here. Okay? And, and by the way, this is a legal, these are the legal questions. So you go to a legal expert for this. You go to an attorney, a business attorney who knows, who can sit down, who's got experience with you, who can run through, you can describe the type of business to them, and they can prescribe the benefits, the pros and cons of each type. Okay? And, and that attorney, by the way, that you ask these questions to, that attorney is one person in your board of directors. You'll have an insurance agent that you'll have to ask questions to. Um, you'll have a bookkeeper. If you don't do your own books, um, you'll be closely tied to a tax preparer, a business consultant, an attorney. Um, this is your professional staff. Okay. And by the way, don't forget, when we write the business plan, particularly if we're going to the bank for funding, we don't ever neglect to put our personal staff down for the bank to see. Okay. Remember, the bank doesn't look at the opportunities like we do. We see opportunities coming out of COVID. We see an opportunity to make some profit to add some choices to our life, some options for our families, possibly some time down the road to do other things that we wanted to do. So this is the time to capitalize on, on these things, okay? That again is an attorney question. 
mm -hmm. what, what permits and or licenses do I need? This is a good question too. Um, there are several occupations in the territory that require special licenses. Think about the medical professions, okay? Uh, so over and above just a business license, we may have other type of certification requirements with the local government, okay? Here is a website for those. And also um, we have on our website under our resource section, and we'll get this to you in the chat. I spoke to Mary Jo about this earlier. Um, we have a checklist that um, we'll provide that is a checklist for starting a business in the Virgin Islands. And it literally, it's numbered. It's really nice. It gives, uh, it gives all the contacts, emails, phone numbers. Please use it. And when you do, if you do find out that a phone number or an email or somebody's left and we need to update it, please let us know so we can keep that current, okay? We'll be sure to conclude that on, uh, on, in the chat, that uh, link for, for uploading. Number six, how do I get people to buy my product or service? Well, I like this question, but I like to split it into two questions. I like the... I like to stop at the word get people because you see part of us going into this business is we have to determine exactly who is going to buy from us. What is the profile of our buyer? Okay, I was with a client the other day. The, I said, what is your, what is your target you know, buyer's profile? And the answer I got was a female between the ages of 16 and I want to say 64, um, living on St. Croix, female 64 living on St. Croix. Um, and I said, gee whiz, how, how, how do you, how can you be so specific? Why? And, and the client said, well, I, it's because of what I do. I sell uh, custom and uh, these nice purses. So it's very important to identify exactly who your customer is. And then we have to figure out how we're gonna get your product or service into the hands of that ideal customer. Because look at the first sentence, sales don't just happen. And we know that from experience, okay? We must market, we must market our business, okay? In order to do that, we must research the market, okay? And by the way, um, down here in the VI, yes, sometimes it's tough to get a hold of really, really current market research, but if you don't ask, you'll never know. So please use us for that. We, we have some avenues uh, of some market research that where we are able to get um, some things that are relatively current, but use us. We are a business resource. Here are the six elements of marketing. And uh, you, you'll see that they're nicely um, categorized there with P's in front of all of them. The prices, the promotion, what's the perception? Marketing's big and marketing um, should be measured. Marketing dollars should be measured to find out how those expenses are working out. Number seven, why do I need a plan? Well, aside from the, the obvious reasons, it's, it's good to put things down on paper. It's good to be organized. Um, it does show a commitment. Part of a business plan um, that we go through, our business plan exercise is, it's a, it's a couple, it's a business plan on steroids. I mean, the, we first start out with, is this feasible? We have to do a feasibility study that entails a little research, okay? To determine if it's feasible, if the idea is feasible. It's also a very, very good communication tool, a business plan is, um, to communicate it to a bank, to communicate it to a potential investor if you need funds, to a family member, if you're bringing the family into the business, okay? 
there's just a lot of good reasons. It should be done, period, end of discussion in my book. And the last one there, helps in funding, it does help. Um, it may, a startup is a very difficult thing to fund from a conventional bank, but we'll see that there are other options. There's other options, right? It's usually not gonna happen with a bank and it's usually not going to happen with a federal grant. I've just, we just don't see that. Again, why do we need, by the way, here's a little piece on that, that feasibility thing, you know? Is it working out? Well, yes, let's go with the plan. No, it's not working out. Okay, we need to go back to the drawing board. Maybe we need to modify it, okay? But I promise you, without the plan, um, you, you're really, really setting yourself up, okay? How can I fund this business? Well, I mean, you're talking to a guy who funded two startups on double-digit credit cards. I've never had a bank approve me or any of my clients for startup funding. It, it just, it's very, very, very difficult. Um, and grants, they're just, they're non-existent. They really, really are non-existent. We may see some, some small scholarship things like that, grant monies and things like that. But, you know, when we sit down to do a business plan to launch a business, um, you know, usually there's more than $1,000 involved. And there's a lot more. And we plan in so much detail that we plan where each of those thousands and thousands of dollars will be spent. Okay, so we have to look at options. We have to. <clears throat> and you know what? Lately, we have had some, some new options. We've got crowdfunding now. Um, that's really interesting. And it's very, very active, crowdfunding. Here are some other ways. Typical borrower requirements, the five C's of credit. Now you may have even seen or heard the SBA area manager do a webinar on the five C's of credit. Um, these are institutional. These are the five C's of credit. They are right there in front of you. Um, credit history is, is important, okay? Now, um, during the pandemic, and amidst the COVID resources, um, these five C's of credit were, were modified slightly. We had to, the, or the, the, the banks had to. We had to modify some of the laws. Everyone was, was, was just vastly negatively affected by COVID. Um, the capacity, the ability to repay a loan. Well, think about that. In a business plan, if you're going to a bank, certainly that business plan must show in its financials the ability to repay that loan. But guess what? In a business loan, the bank requires two forms of collateral. The first one is that business plan. That's your projections that shows, Mr. and Mrs. Banker, I did my homework, I've done my research. I've done three years of projection. I can pay your loan back. There's enough demand. And in my plan is how I plan to attain that. And then the bank's going to say, well, yeah, that's great. Um, but bank, conventional banks usually require another form of collateral. And that includes anywhere from a 20 to a 30% down payment. And then the balance must be collateralized. Okay. So you can see that going to, you know, borrowing money for a business is not a, you know, it's not as easy as we may have thought it was. And while I'm on this subject, um, I want to refer everybody to another resource on our website. Um, and that is the, the title of that is uh, how do I qualify for a commercial loan? It's very interesting reading. And at some point in business, um, you'll really need to know that. It's a very good document. I think it's two pages long, 
but but take a look at it. Again, I know some folks are starting businesses and it may be unlikely that a bank will fund a startup, but take a look at that document, okay? It's got excellent information. By the way, we also have a bank in the territory, the Economic Development Authority Bank, which is a different kind of bank. And they actually can operate a little bit differently than our conventional banks, okay? Um, they are called a lender of last resort, and they are able to, um, you know, to, to, to modify the, uh, the credit requirements a little bit, okay? The requirement to go to that bank, by the way, uh, is to be turned down by a local bank and then have a turn down document in writing to bring over to the EDA, okay? What records should I keep? Um, definitely all of those, but I, I want to just share a story with you. Um, it's one of the lessons learned during COVID that we learned at the SBDC, and it epitomizes the meaning of keeping good records, particularly good financial records. Um, you're getting ready to start a business or you're in business. Um, here it is, the, you know, the middle of June, we should know what our business did the previous month. We should know how many dollars our business brought in. We should know how many dollars of our business went out for expenses. Um, all too often, um, we were seeing where the business owners were a little bit lax in, um, in their financial management systems, okay? Please, on our website, um, we've got a series of bookkeeping webinars that we specifically put on for COVID. Um, go back and look through those. Call the SBDC. Don't start a business if you're not going to keep track of profit and loss. It's just that simple. And by the way, there are other record keeping requirements and they're shown right there in front of you. Okay, this is work. Going into business is work, okay? Not everyone can do it, but we should know before we go in what's required. Number 10, where can I go for help? Well, I'll tell you, we, our business, uh, due to COVID exploded. The phone system, you know, exploded. We have hundreds of new clients due to COVID and we are very thankful for that. Um, it's, this is what we do. Call us, we come onto our website, register on our website um, as a client. And by the way, that's done under the advising tab uh, on the website. We're undergoing some revisions on the website and it's looking really, really good compared to where it was when we entered COVID. It really, really is looking good. But go into our website, it's visbdc.org and look for that advising button and sign up with us. You know, if you have to think of us as a, you know, as a new invisible staff manager that you can go to to ask questions. Um, that's what we do. We speak business. Uh, develop your board of directors. This is key. It's really key. You, you, you can't do all of this alone um, and you weren't really meant to. You have certain areas of expertise and other folks have others. So um, it's good to partner with them uh, and, and show that professional association. It's the way, it's the right way to start a business. And there you see, you got a banker, an attorney, insurance, business counselor. <clears throat> banks will ask, we've had banks review business plans and they say, well, I see that you're qualified, but gee whiz, you, you didn't talk about, you know, who was going to do your tax preparation and how you were going to be insured and, you know, 
So just mention this, mention, mention your board and your plan. Taxes, bookkeeper, accountant, become familiar. Um, this is really important. And particularly during COVID, a lot of the tax laws change. Uh, they're changing right now. Um, there are different tax credits that are available to us, to our business, to our family as a result of COVID. So have that conversation with your accountant and ensure that your accountant is up to speed on all the COVID changes um, and the new laws that are going to be, that they can, that can be utilized to your benefit. Okay. Okay, this, this is just a graphic of what we've been talking about all along. Which the guy in the suit, that guy used to wear a green suit, I thought. Okay, but it's true, though. I mean, I, I can honestly say I, I've never had any success with it. It's just not there. Just not there. There's no free money. Um, just a few tips. Uh, can't stress the record keeping system enough. R really, really can't. Um, it's so critical. I mean, it's your, it's your livelihood. I mean, it's your profitability. Um, so stay on top of those numbers. Stay on top of them. Pay expenses, keep records, save them, document. Um, anyone who's gotten a PPP, uh, they will most certainly agree with those three things there. Okay, no one will believe your idea as much as you. Again, um, we want to state our objectives very, very uh, concrete. We want to quantify them so they're measurable. Okay, once your business gets to a point where you, where you do go, have to take it to the next level and you are writing that business plan to go fund that project that is truly going to change your life. That bank is going to go through, that lender is going to go through that plan with a fine tooth comb, okay? And they're going to start asking all the questions. So that business plan is just a summary of Matter of fact, our business plan outline on our website um, is a historical document that literally takes the questions that bankers and uh, lenders ask when they review a business plan. So when you sit down with us and we do the business plan together, um, that's what we do. We, we anticipate those questions. And we have a darn good answer for that bank. Because remember, we may get one shot with that bank. We want to walk out of there with a check. Um, and it's, I mean, that's no, that's not a rehearsal. Um, this is exciting. I mean, we have clients right here in the territory that are undergoing this for a global expansion plan. Um, this is no time to half step your work. This is serious business. Um, so it should be serious from the start. Um, come and see us. You know, our staff has got a lot of experience. Um, we've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, and we, we can help. We truly believe that we can help. So please come in. We, uh, our services, again, are free of charge. Um, and we have a thousand of these networks. Uh, around the U.S. So um, I think we're going to flip open all of our contact information so you can take our phone numbers. Um, here are the next steps. Uh, the only other next step that's not there is call SBDC and we'll get those numbers up for you. Let me do a time check. And there we go. By the way, um, our offices are uh, 
we are still not officially opened in our offices. Okay, we are still working and most certainly are getting the job done, but we're doing it by phone and we're actually doing some selective engagement. Um, long story short, call that number, email us, um, and go to the website. Just register on our website as a client. There, there's a live, there's a couple libraries in there of information. Um, and really good stuff. I mean, really, really good stuff. It's current. We continue to update it. Um, you'll see all the COVID information there. It's a very good one-stop shop for your business. You can plug into, we can monitor all the government activities, Department of Health, all the COVID resources. Um, and we've got them all right there on our website for you. <clears throat> So oh, that concludes the formal part of the presentation. Mary Jo, if you're with us, I have not been checking the chat, but I would like to see if we have any, open it up to questions from the group. We do have some questions and I will read off the ones that were typed in the chat. And then if you guys will raise your hands after we finish those, we'll let you go on air to ask additional questions. Uh, one of the first questions was asked is, will this presentation be available for download? I just put the PDF version of the presentation in the chat. So yes, you may download that. And the next question is for you, Greg. If I set a small consulting business in the United States, can I operate in the USVI? And what are some of the benefits of a small home-based business in terms of taxes? Two questions. Okay, let me see if I can. Um, number one, uh, here we go. I've got it up in front of me. Can you operate in the USVI? Y yes, you can, but you're going to need a license. So um, check into that, that, that checklist. Um, and that will show you how to obtain uh, a lot. There's a lot of different ways to have a company headquartered somewhere uh, and then do business somewhere else. But think about it. If we're going to operate a service business here, we're going to require a license for the most part. So that's the answer to that one. What are some of the benefits of a home-based business? Well, um, Let's see, one, you can possibly save money on a lease uh, from leasing commercial space. So there's a monetary saving there. Um, in terms of taxes, um, yes, there are tax deductions for your business. And I, I believe there are actually a couple different ways that you can take home office deductions. Um, that's actually a better question than I thought now, because that begs the, the, the point that that is a excellent question to ask your tax preparer. And that question is, look, I'm operating my business out of my home and have been. Am I getting the full advantage of my home office deductions? So good question. Good, good question. Okay, next question. Start startup operating costs, et cetera, for new business, where to go for financial assistance? Okay, let's see if I can. Okay, link. Okay, link. Startup operating costs for a new business. Okay. Startup operating costs. Now, the only way I know how to determine what costs are required to launch or start a business is to start that plan, is to start the business plan, okay? And we're going to take inventory of everything we need to execute that business, okay? What equipment is needed, if there's any 
you know, what logistics are involved, what, um, what people are involved. I know of no other way to determine startup costs than to go through that plan. Okay. So, and that's something that we do when we work together on a business plan. Um, we ask those questions, okay? What is required? What are your competitors using? Do we need to have what they have? Do we need to spend this much money on that piece of equipment, okay? So the only way I know how to get it to the dollar is to start the plan, okay? And where to go for financial assistance? Well. Um, I'm going to point you to that slide. We're going to go to our friends. We're going to, we may have to go to crowdfunding. Okay. We may have to go to a credit card. We can make an attempt at a bank or a lender. Okay. But launching a startup is one of the most riskiest ventures there is. Okay. And look, I'm on your side. I've done five of these. And I was willing, like you, to take the risk. I see the opportunity like you. The banks don't see it like us. That's the thing that we're up against. Okay, so we have to be very crafty and think outside the box. And by the way, there's two ways to, to, to fund a startup. Well, there's two ways to fund anything. One is with debt. And one is with equity, okay? The debt funding means that you borrow cash from a bank or something similar. The equity funding is where you bring in a partner that, bring, that comes with money and or skill, okay? And that's called equity funding, okay? As opposed to just convention, conventional bank financing which is just financing the debt, just making a loan and then spending the money according to plan. Okay. I hope these questions, I hope the, like Mark, if that doesn't, uh, if that's not detailed enough, uh, you're welcome to call or email uh, and we'll get some more detail on that for you. But those are good questions. Next question. How much does a business plan cost and what is used to determine the price? Okay, how much does it cost? Um, I can't speak to the business plan price here in the Virgin Islands. Um, I, in my last business, we wrote them, our minimum fee was, believe it or not, $10,000 for a business plan, okay? I do not recommend that you pay someone to write your business plan. I, I, I honestly can't in good faith as an SBDC counselor, um, I can't I, I can't make that type of advisement. Um, it's much better to do it with the SBDC, and here's why: because you're the expert on your business. If you want to open up a business that solves subatomic mathematical equations, um, you, I'm, you know that's your business. You know that. Well, when you come to us, we know very little about subatomic physics, but we know about planning. We've done a few plans. Um, you know, that said, I will tell you, having done years of plans, never in my life um, have I ever planned for a mandatory extended government business shutdown as we saw during COVID. I thought I had seen everything. Um, so... But no, on the business plan, um, you know, unless you've got something really, really technical going on, um, and even then I, I would uh, probably challenge it. But here um, for a business, we've got the SBDC here. Call us, let us work together. We'll send you an outline that, again, is a series of questions um, that are designed to anticipate you know, that lenders uh, review. Um, so what is used to determine the price? Oh boy, I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Business plan prices are all over the board. I've seen them 
where they're two thousand dollars. I've seen them where they're ten thousand. Um, I don't know how to how to answer that that pricing part. Um, and I quite honestly have never explored um, purchasing a business plan in the territory. I'm certain there's a service out there. I don't have any experience with it. Okay, next question. Can I sit down with someone from SBDC to work on my business plan specifically about my business? Well, absolutely. It, that's what we do. And there's no better time than now to do that, by the way, um, Vaughn. Um, absolutely. Depending on where you are, call our office um, and we'll schedule an appointment. Now, if you're, if you're a client, um, great. If you're not, we would ask that you, um, you sign on to our website. And by the way, if you sign on to our website, we'll get back to you. We'll actually get back to you if you uh, register on our website. So you don't even have to make the appointment. We will call you. We will see your registration. Um, we'll intercept it and we'll reach out to you. So please register on the website. And yes, we, we'd be pleased to do that. Um, and there's no better time than the present. That your second question, crowdfunding, what I don't have a lot of experience with. And that's really the long and short of it. I've read some articles. Um, I see where these, it, mostly they're small amounts, but I've seen some, some interesting numbers. Um, I'm going to make a note and I'm going to make a note and we're going to get back to you with some resources that we have on crowdfunding. So thanks for that question. We'll get a chance to, to get a little smarter about it. Thank you for that. Okay, next. That's the last of the questions that I see. So if anyone else would like to ask a question, please raise your hand. We will acknowledge you. And then you can unmute your mic. And for those of you that are not familiar, there's um, there's a place Hi. where... Okay, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I'll take them out now. Oh, you're make, making that noise. Mr. Lake, your mic is it's open. making that noise. Yes, good afternoon. Yes, Mr. Lake, go ahead with your question, please. Yeah, just as a follow-up to um, a question there that I asked. Um, well, I was asking a question from a point of view that I, I did the course in preparing business plans for clients. So now I'm looking at um, offering that service, consulting service to other small businesses. But um, Mr. Kopach is saying, uh, persons are now in the business, um, perhaps the SBDC should be doing all of the work. So I'm thinking that persons, well, who, persons who do offer this service should be able to get paid. And my thing is that if you're having a business, there's a cost operating a business. So um, offering that service of preparing a business plan, they, they have to be a cost to, to it. Um, so I ask the question from the standpoint of um, being the person who preparing a business plan for clients. And uh, I know there's different formulas out there that people try out like for example, a percentage of the cost for you going to a bank to borrow a million dollars, but perhaps you charge 0.5% or the number of hours. So just so trying to ascertain if you all was aware of any standard formula of determining how to charge. And secondly, um, the presentation it talks about business. Now is the time to start up new businesses, start up businesses. I think the time has come now where the SBDC or whoever the power, the powers that need to look at um, even starting out with 
uh, an amount, say $25,000 for startup. You, you come on, you, um, we're coming on having a forum talking about startup small businesses and there's no defined, definite area to go to get assistance. So I think Copatch and your team should perhaps now look at um, having a definitive option for persons starting up small business, even if it's $25,000, rather than saying that, oh, um, perhaps these avenue are going to the bank get turned down. Persons may not have the collateral. So I think it's something that to be looking to and come back perhaps 2022 with having perhaps something that persons could know, well, you're gonna get $25,000 to start up your business rather than still uncertainty and don't, don't know where to go or perhaps relying on your personal credit. Some people don't understand and perhaps a little more training could be implemented or, or make the awareness of persons how you build credit and all that kind of stuff. Thank you. Okay. Sure, thank you. You want to start, Greg, and I'll chime in. No, 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 no. Go ahead. I, I, um, I listen to everything. I, I am I by no means. Um, I hope I did not come across as discouraging someone from starting a business because that number one, that is not my intention, and that is not our style. So I hope, Mark, I did not leave that impression to you. No, not at all. I'm just saying that I'm think more should be done to encourage that or foster that. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll ahead, make Mary. a comment. Um, Mark registered to become a client at the SBDC and work with one of the business counselors. Work on your business plan to come up with um, some prices for doing business plans because you have to have financial projections and you come up with reasons for why you charge what you charge. So you need a business plan even for a consulting business. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually I spoke with, um, I spoke well, with- um, Let's not go into details about individuals at this point. We can do that offline, but- I was just saying I spoke with a consultant and there was a different different um, formulas of, of arriving at the price. So I just wanted to know if the team, the person, Greg, had any ideas. So he didn't, he responded to it, no problem. Well, and, and the other thing I would say too is that we we already have consultants as clients. That that Consultants are no stranger to us. We have them now. So we welcome if you're considering a new consulting business, um, come in and let's 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 do that. Let's certainly put that thing under the microscope and and work together on. It. Oh yeah, we we already have consultants. Some are general and some are very very specific in their work as well. So yeah, that's that's what we do. Okay, and we we have done a couple of presentations on the fundamentals of business credit and explains how businesses start to establish business credit versus looking at their personal credit. Uh, we did one of those back, um, I think it was the middle of May. So you could go back and watch one of those videos on our YouTube channel or our Facebook channel. And we will be scheduling another one of those to start um, late summer, early fall. And the whole part about going into business, if if Greg, if you could go back and put up your slide number 18 in your presentation. Question number eight, how do I, can I fund my business? And exactly how much money you need depends on what you're going to do and your business plan.
Yeah, and the the other on on this on this question eight here, just please remember that, um, and this is not uh, pertinent to just our territory. This is everywhere. This is all over the U.S. And this is an observation. It's, a, it's more than an observation. It's a fact of life. Our number one obstacle in launching a new business is access to capital, period, end of discussion. It's not just a problem in St. Croix or St. John or St. Thomas or Des Moines, Indiana, Iowa, or California. I mean, it truly is the number one uh, obstacle or challenge that we face. So yes, we have to continuously think outside the box. Again, we're coming out of, out of COVID. We should be thinking right now of how we can address those, those issues. There's stuff we haven't tried that's out there. And there are things that are working that others have tried. We just haven't come up on them yet as far as a best practice. We need to be looking around for them though. We really do. It's, we all feel that, uh, that access to capital obstacle, we all do. Okay, next question. Does the VISBDC organize counselors advisors by the type of industry that the company wants to get into? Hmm. Well, we don't really have, I don't think we do. We, we, are, we are, collectively, we actually have a, a very wide bandwidth of experience uh, in our counseling staff. I mean, direct extensive banking experience to um, folks who have, you know, franchised their own business, bought and sold. Um, so we've got a lot of bandwidth, but I don't know that, that we organize like that. Now, as we work, we, we meet, we meet regularly, we discuss projects internally and we collaborate internally and we might put, you know, a couple of counselors on, on one piece of a project if they have some expertise. But of course we do that. That's just, that's, that's just prudent for us to do that. So, so yes, we do that, but we don't have enough to where, you know, we can say, well, gee whiz, we have one for agriculture, one for the energy sector, one for the medical sector, one for hospitality. Um, no, we don't do that. We don't, we're not that structured. We'd like to think we're a little bit more agile than that, hopefully. So good question though. Okay. All right, well, while you guys are thinking of more questions, I just wanna to bring to your attention that tomorrow at 3 p.m., the School of Business in collaboration with the SBDC is going to be uh, sponsoring a webinar on cash flow. Um, they're talking about business processes in general. So this webinar is from 3 to 4.15 p.m. So you can register. There's a link um, on our, uh, what do you call that thing? On our web portal that you can register for that webinar. And that's at three o'clock. And it's talking about business processes. And then next week, we will not have any SBDC webinars. Uh, we will be working on our strategic plan. So we'll be doing some internal planning. And then fo the following week, starting June 29th, we will cover the SBIR, STTR program with the SBA on webinar Tuesday at 10 a.m. And then on the 1st, we will do an update on the COVID um, process, the COVID webinars, not the COVID webinars, the COVID program. That's on, on sorry, July 6th. All right. Do we have any more questions? 
Now, Greg is scheduled to oh. work on this webinar until 3.30, but if you guys want to let him go early, I'm sure he'll be okay with that. Well, I, you know what, may I say something? Sure, go ahead. Um, to, the, uh, to the folks in the audience who are existing SBDC clients, um, we are in the midst of our uh, client survey and we've sent out an email. And if you have received that, please, please take a minute um, and complete that survey for us. It's, it's very important to us. And by the way, that's an anonymous survey. It will take you less than a minute, um, but it's really helpful to us. You know, for the last hour, I sat here and talked about the importance of a business plan for business. Well, you know, we're a business too. And when COVID hit the SBDC in the Virgin Islands, we had to put together a business resiliency plan. We got together and had to change a lot of our business processes. Um, we had a couple hundred new customers hit us in a very short period of time. Um, we've made no changes to staff uh, in the last 15 months. And we think that we've at least tried to keep up. If we haven't, there's a place on that survey for you to tell us. Um, so please, if you already are a client or know someone who is, just remind them that that survey, we will look at that. That's not gonna just go in the trash can somewhere. And we're gonna look with an eagle eye at some very specific things on the survey. We wanna look for unmet needs in the community. Um, and you know what? We need the feedback from y'all to, to help us identify that. And when we do, I promise you, we will look at our plan and we will adjust our business plan accordingly. Um, just like, you know, just like you would adjust yours if you have an opportunity and you see an unmet need to roll out a new product, um, that's exactly what we're doing. We are simply in a continuous improvement mode and that survey is one instrument we use. So if you know anybody, if you haven't filled it out, please take one minute. It's important to us. Thanks. Okay, there's another- That's all question. I have, Mary. Okay, you wanna tackle this next question. Do you have special assistance for veterans? Oh my goodness, what a great question. And again, a timely question. We, um, yes, the answer is yes. And the timeliness of that is on our last staff meeting, um, we decided that we were going to amplify the, uh, the, that, that segment of business, the veterans market. So here's what we have. We've got a package of resources that veterans are eligible for. Um, we have a resource called a Veterans Business Outreach Center. We are actually assigned to the one in New York. Um, and they have... A, a whole separate array of resources. They, by the way, have physically been here twice in the last three years that I've been here. They are our partner for veterans resources. Um, I will tell you, if you call us, we will get that veterans information to you. I wanna leave you with one little snippet. Last week, we had a, a client who was a veteran. We connected them up to the VBOC in New York. The feedback I got from the client was that the hour they spent on the phone with the VBOC in New York was the most productive hour of 2021 that they've had in their business, okay? So yes, if you're a veteran, um, yes, please give us a call. And by the way, um, we put that veteran certification into those SBA professional designations like minority certifications, hub zone certifications, women owned small business certifications, okay? Um, and we are in the process now of, we have these certifications in progress. So to the women out there, to the veterans, to the existing business owners who 
already have qualified for a hub zone certification, but haven't done the certification, get, please give us a call and, and let's get that certification under your belt. So good, good question. Good question on the certifications. Okay. And just to piggyback on the certifications, the federal government is the largest purchaser of products and services in the, in the world, the US federal government. And they need people to do everything. And we just had a webinar on Tuesday where they talked about the 8A uh, business development program. And that's a program that's geared towards socially and economically disadvantaged uh, businesses where the federal government is attempting to level the playing field. Okay, and that's a program that a business can be in for up to nine years. And we've had, we've had a presenter that called that the Millionaire Maker Program because it puts you in a position to make a lot of money over the next, over the nine years that you're in the program. And the SBDC can help you get registered uh, for that program. You need a DUNS number, you need to be registered in SAM. All of that's probably gobbledygook for those of you that haven't sat through that webinar yet, but register to become an SBDC client and the federal government buys almost everything. So no matter what your business is, there's probably a contract out there that the federal government is looking to fulfill um, that you might qualify for, but you can't get any federal government dollars without being registered in their program. And the SBDC is here to help you with that. And that service is also um, free of charge as well. And I will tell you, we, we were talking to the SBA guy just a few days ago and we had him pull up the, the number of certifications in the territory for women, for veterans, for hub zone. And let me just say this, it's the biggest room in the house. It's, it's room for improvement. It's the biggest room in the house. We can only go up. So please call, we can get you through that, that SAM registration. We can get you through the women's, uh, women owned certification, the hub zone, the minority, the veteran certification. It's what we do. So please call us, please call us about that. Okay, Greg, they don't want you to go early. We have another question for you. Where good, can we good. find more information about the potential COVID tax credits mentioned earlier in the presentation, specific for VI startups? Mm. Well, I don't know if Ted is on this. I don't know if our boss is on this call, but um, Ted could answer that because Less than a month ago, I was on a webinar. It was at night. It was like from six to nine. Uh, oh boy, Miss Plaskett was on there. Uh, Ted, uh, here's the answer. I'll I'll find I'll find out and we'll get it out to the folks. There was like a two or three hour webinar. It was at night. Uh, Miss Pl Ted spoke at it. Our boss, Ted Gutierrez, the state director. So we'll find out. Um, we'll find out. The other thing too is talk to your accountants. Your accountant should know and should be abreast of these changes. So, but we'll get you that information. Thanks. Good question. One other thing, Greg, it says specific to startups. Now in terms of COVID tax credits. Uh, I don't know. I can't, you know, right off the bat, I, I can't say that there's anything specific to startups. Um, I will tell you this, uh, and this is not a tax credit uh, issue, but COVID has really done a number in the financial world. Um, if you do, when you do talk to accountants, um, you will, you'll find that, you know, COVID has caused us to look at some of the ways we account for some of the expenses that we incurred during COVID. So there have been uh, depreciation law changes. Um, you know, depreciation uh, is a word that we associate that with, with tangible assets. Um, and depreciation 
uh, rules have changed. So I don't know if there's any credit specifically on the startup side, but as we take a closer look and get into our P&L, I think our accountants can shed some light on how we are currently treating um, uh, events that happened during COVID. So, so while I don't think there's any, any tax credits, um, there's a lot of internal changes that we need to be aware of and it, and it affects how we keep our books. So definitely have the conversation with the account. And one of the things about the COVID assistance the businesses generally have had to have been in business on or before February the 15th of 2020 to benefit from a lot of those things, correct? That is correct. That's the official start date, if you will, for the federal government when they lined up those COVID resources. I'm um, looking at this other question here. Can we be reached after hours? Well, of course we can. Um, we don't post that on our schedules. But I'll tell you a good way um, to reach us is to use that info line, that in, what is it, Mary Jo, info at BISBDC. Um, yeah, that's a good email question and answer. Uh, a lot of folks get to see that um, and we can be pretty responsive around that. The other thing too is um, we'd be negligent if we, uh, the counseling staff, um, while we're away from our phones, we do call in and check our messages and some of us do it on weekends. So um, if you've got to make a call and it's on a Saturday or Sunday and it's got to go to an office record, please make the call. I mean, it's possible that somebody can get to it, you know, before Monday morning, if not Monday morning. And so. if you're registered to be a client, your uh, counselor will work with you. When you register to be a client, we have a whole new world for you when, you when you enter on our website. We've got a very cool database. It's confidential. You can take part in it as much or as little as you want. Um, come, come by and, and see us. See what we do. Um, too many people just, they, they, I just think they may not know exactly what we do. But if you're in business or thinking about business, stop by our office or call us. Um, it's what we do. Well, don't just stop by, make an appointment. Um, yeah, make an appointment. The, the best thing to do, you know, the best thing to do is register on the website if you're for this class for, for starting the business and we'll reach out to you. We will see that registration and you know, one of us will get back to you and we'll set up the appointment. We'll ask a lot of questions. Um, so it'll be, it's good. It'll be a very interesting process. And we want to know about it when it doesn't go to your liking. So, so, you know, let's be frank and honest with, with each other, but, you know, let's work together. And that, that starts with a phone call or a website registration. And I, I don't remember if you said it, Greg, but the SBDC is here for the life of the business, as long as they qualify as a small business, from the idea of having a business all the way up to the point where you go out of business. Yes, and you know, think of it like this. I mean, seven, if, if 17 years at SCORE taught me something, it's this. Um, as a business owner, with by being affiliated with the SBDC, uh, the SBA and, and the federal organizations, um, you really do have kind of a, a, a board of directors. I can remember as businesses go along, they go through the startup phase, they start to mature, they see an opportunity, they develop, they go a different route, they go global, they do something. But SCORE was there the whole time and SBDC will be there. Wouldn't it be nice, wouldn't it be nice if every month on the fifth day of the month, think about this, you, an SBDC counselor and the business owner get together. They spend 15 minutes max together. Here's what they do. They look over the previous month's performance. 
they compare it to the year before performance. They discuss what they discussed the previous month on the phone call um, as far as the goals. And they say, okay, have we reached it? Are we here? Are we behind? Um, they take a look at the PL and they look at the balance sheet. All this can be done in under 15 minutes. And it is like a report card for that business, like a health report, a health report card. Uh, and I'll tell you, there's no finer way than to go into a month knowing that you've reviewed the previous month. You know what opportunities you took, took advantage of, which ones you missed and you're right back at it again this month. And you know that on the fifth day of next month, you're gonna review the month that you're in right now. Can't stress enough staying on top of the performance of the business. I just saw too much of it where, where people just didn't know. You know, part of the qualification for COVID was you had to have been injured by COVID in 2020 over 2019. We had some folks who didn't know the extent of their injury or if there was an injury. Keep good records. It shows itself on the bottom line. It really, really does. So, and we can help you with all that record keeping. I know people don't like financial statements. Nobody does. But you know what? We did a webinar about a month and a half ago and we took clients through a blank sheet of paper starting a, uh, a cash flow statement, a profit and loss, and a balance sheet. And, you know, it's doable. We can learn all this stuff. And it's, again, it's what we do. So call us. How are we on time? Oh, we're good we're on time. Good. Any more questions? Okay. Well, it looks like we've answered almost everything. And if we haven't, again, like Greg said, um, call us. Greg, you can go back to that last slide. Oh, okay, wait a minute. With those phone numbers. But on behalf of our state director, Mr. Ted Gutierrez and our fabulous staff on St. Croix, Greg Kopach, Hazel Jones, Karen Jones, and our student interns over there. I apologize for not remembering the names. And then our staff on St. Thomas. Uh, we wanna thank you all for joining us for this afternoon's session. We hope that it's been helpful yeah. for you. And Greg has up there our contact information. Find us on Facebook, find us on YouTube, find us on Twitter, find us on Startup Space, find us on our own webpage visbdc.org. Send us an email at info at visbdc.org. Call us. And if you call us from your cell phone, or if we, if, if we call you from our office phone and it goes to your cell phone, it may show up as 340-776-9200 on St. Thomas. That's the University of the Virgin Islands main number and it may show up as 340-778-1620, which is the university's main phone number on St. Croix, but that's definitely the Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center calling you back. So without any further delay, we wanna thank you all again for joining us. Greg, thank you for a fabulous presentation and we wish you all a pleasant good evening and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow on the cash flow webinar with the School of Business. Yeah, thank you all.